Ian Dury Ian Robbins Dury was an English singer-songwriter and actor who rose to fame during the late 1970s, during the punk and new wave era of rock music. He was the lead singer of Ian Dury and the Blockheads and before that of Kilburn and the High Roads. Dury was born at his parents' home at 43 Weald Rise, Harrow Weald, Middlesex. His father, William George Dury, was a bus driver and former boxer, while his mother Margaret was a health visitor, the daughter of a Cornish doctor and the granddaughter of an Irish landowner. William Dury trained with Rolls Royce to be a chauffeur, and was then absent for long periods, so Peggy Dury took Ian to stay with her parents in Cornwall. After the Second World War, the family moved to Switzerland, where his father chauffeured for a millionaire in the Western European Union. In 1946, Peggy brought Ian back to England and they stayed with her sister, Mary, a doctor in Cranham, a small village in Essex. Although he saw his father on visits, they never lived together again. At the age of seven, he contracted polio, most likely, he believed, from a swimming pool at South End on Sea during the 1949 polio epidemic. After six weeks in a full plaster cast in the Royal Cornwall Infirmary, Truro, he was moved to Black Notley Hospital, Braintree, Essex, where he spent a year and a half before going to Chaley Heritage Craft School, East Sussex, in 1951. Chaley was a school and hospital for disabled children, and believed in toughening them up. Contributing to the observant and determined person Dury became. Chaley taught trades such as cobbling and printing, but Dury's mother wanted him to be more academic, so his aunt Moll arranged for him to enter the Royal Grammar School, High Wycombe, where he recounted being punished for misdemeanors by being made to learn long tracks of poetry until a housemaster found him sobbing and put a stop to it. From 1964 he studied art at the Royal College of Art under Peter Blake, and in 1967 took part in a group exhibition. Fantasy and Figuration, alongside Pat Dalthwaite, Herbert Kitchen and Stas Periscos at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London. From 1967 he taught art at various colleges in the south of England. He also painted commercial illustrations for the Sunday Times in the early 1970s. Dury married Elizabeth Betty Rathmel, on June 3, 1967 and they had two children, Jemima and Baxter Dury. Dury divorced Rathmel in 1985 but remained on good terms. He also cohabited with a teenage fan, Denise Rudette, for six years after he moved to London. Later, he squatted at Oval Mansions, Kennington Oval. Dury formed Kilburn and the High Roads in 1971, and they played their first gig at Croydon School of Art on 5 December 1971. Dury was vocalist and lyricist, co-writing with pianist Russell Hardy and later enrolling into the group a number of the students he was teaching at Canterbury College of Art, including guitarist Keith Lucas and bassist Humphrey Ocean. Managed first by Charlie Gillett and Gordon Nelke and latterly by fashion entrepreneur Tommy Roberts, the Kilburns found favor on London's pub rock circuit and signed to Dawn Records in 1974 but, despite favorable press coverage and a tour opening for English rock band The Who, the group failed to rise above cult status and disbanded in 1975. The group produced two albums, Handsome and Vote Have Bunch. Under the management of Andrew King and Peter Jenner, the original managers of Pink Floyd, Ian Dury and the Blockheads quickly gained a reputation as one of the top live acts of new wave music. Dury's lyrics are a combination of lyrical poetry, word play, observation of British everyday life, character sketches, and sexual humor. This is what we find. Home improvement expert Harold Hill of Harold Hill, of do-it-yourself dexterity and double glazing skill, came home to find another gentleman's kippers in the grill, so he sanded off his winkle with his black and decker drill. The song Billy Ricky Dicky rhymes I had a love affair with Nina, in the back of my cortina with a seasoned up hyena could not have been more obscener. The blockhead sound drew from its members diverse musical influences, which included jazz, rock and roll, funk, and reggae. And Dury's love of music hall. The band was formed after Dury began writing songs with pianist and guitarist Chaz Jankel. Jankel took Dury's lyrics, fashioned a number of songs, and they began recording with members of Radio Caroline's Loving Awareness Band, drummer Charlie Charles, bassist Norman Watroy, keyboard player Mick Gallagher, guitarist John Turnbull, and former Kilburn saxophonist Davy Payne. An album was completed, but major record labels passed on the band. Next door to Dury's manager's office was the newly formed Stiff Records, a perfect home for Dury's maverick style. The single Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll, released August 26, 1977, marked Dury's Stiff debut. 
Although it was banned by the BBC it was named Single of the Week by NME on its release. The single issue was soon followed, at the end of September, by the album New Boots and Panties. Which, although it did not include the single, achieved platinum status. In October 1977, Dory and his band started performing as Ian Dory and the Blockheads, when the band signed on for the Stiff Live Stiffs tour alongside Elvis Costello and the attractions, Nicklo, Reckless Eric, and Larry Wallace. The tour was a success, and Stiff launched a concerted Ian Dory marketing campaign, resulting in the top 10 hit What a Waste, and the hit single Hit Me with Your Rhythm Stick which reached number one in the UK at the beginning of 1979, selling just short of a million copies. Again, Hit Me was not included on the original release of the subsequent album Do It Yourself. Both the single and its accompanying music video featured Davy Payne playing two saxophones simultaneously during his solo, in evident homage to jazz saxophonist Rasan Roland Kirk, whose trademark technique this was. With their hit singles, the band built up a dedicated following in the UK and other countries and their next single Reasons to be Cheerful, Part 3 made number 3 in the UK. The band's second album Do It Yourself was released in June 1979 in the Barney Bubbles design sleeve of which there were over a dozen variations, all based on samples from the Crown Wallpaper catalog. Bubbles also designed the Blockhead logo. Jankel left the band temporarily and relocated to the US after the release of What a Waste, but he subsequently returned to the UK and began touring sporadically with the Blockheads, eventually returning to the group full time for the recording of Hit Me with Your Rhythm Stick. According to Mickey Gallagher, the band recorded 28 takes of the song but eventually settled on the second take for the single release. Partly due to personality clashes with Dury, Jankel left the group again in 1980 after the recording of the Do It Yourself LP, and he returned to the USA to concentrate on his solo career. The group worked solidly over the 18 months between the release of Rhythm Stick and their next single, Reasons to be Cheerful, which returned them to the charts, making the UK top 10. Jankel was replaced by former Dr. Feel Good guitarist Wilco Johnson, who also contributed to 10 next album Laughter and its two hit singles, although Gallagher recalls that the recording of the Laughter album was difficult and that Dury was drinking heavily in this period. In 1980-81 Dury and Jankel teamed up again with Sly and Robbie and the Compass Point All-Stars to record Lord Upminster. The Blockheads toured the UK and Europe throughout 1981, sometimes augmented by jazz trumpeter Don Sherry, ending the year with their only tour of Australia. The Blockheads disbanded in early 1982 after Dury secured a new recording deal with Polydor Records through A&R man Frank Nielsen. Choosing to work with a group of young musicians which he named the Music Students, he recorded the album 4000 Weeks Holiday. This album marked a departure from his usual style and was not as well received by fans for its American jazz influence. The Blockheads briefly reformed in June 1987 to play a short tour of Japan, and then disbanded again. In September 1990, following the death from cancer of drummer Charlie Charles, they reunited for two benefit concerts in aid of Charles' family, held at the Forum, Camden Town, with Stephen Monty on drums. In December 1990, augmented by Merlin Reese Jones on guitar and Will Parnell on percussion, they recorded the live album Warts and Audience at the Brixton Academy. The Blockheads toured Spain in January 1991, then disbanded again until August 1992 when, Following Jankel's return to England, they were invited to reform for the Matstock Festival in Finsbury Park. This was followed by sporadic gigs in Europe, Ireland, the UK and Japan through late 1994 and 1995. In the early 1990s, Dury appeared with English band Curve on the Benefit compilation album Peace Together. Dury and Curve singer Tony Halliday shared vocals on a cover of the Blockheads track What a Waste. In March 1996 Dury was diagnosed with cancer and, after recovering from an operation, he set about writing another album. In early 1998 he reunited with the Blockheads to record the album Mr. Love Pants. In May, Ian Dury and the Blockheads hit the road again, with Dylan Howe replacing Stephen Monty on drums. Davy Payne left the group permanently in August and was replaced by Guy Ladotsman, this lineup gigged throughout 1999 culminating in their last performance with Ian Dury on February 6, 2000 at the London Palladium. Dury died six weeks later on March 27, 2000. The Blockheads have continued after Dury's death, contributing to the tribute album Brand New Boots and Panties, Then Where's the Party? The Blockheads still tour, and are currently recording a new album. They currently comprise Jankel, Watt Roy, Gallagher, Turnbull, 
John Roberts on drums, Gilad Otsman and Dave Lewis on saxes. Derek the Draw is now writing songs with Janko as well as singing. They are aided and abetted by Lee Harris, who is their aide de camp. In 1984, Dury was featured in the music video to the Who's Roger Daltrey's minor hit single Walking in My Sleep. Dury's 1981 song Spasticus Autistic is written to show his disdain for that year's International Year of Disabled Persons, which he saw as patronizing and counterproductive, was banned by the BBC. Dury was a disabled person himself, having been left crippled by childhood polio. The lyrics were uncompromising. Poem The song's refrain, I'm Spasticus, Autisticus, was inspired by the response of the rebellious Roman gladiators in the film Spartacus who, when instructed to identify their leader, all answered, I am Spartacus, to protect him. According to Professor George McKay, in a 2009 article in popular music called Crippled with Nerves, Dury described the song as a war cry on desert island discs. Although the song was banned from being broadcast by the BBC before 6 p.m. when it first came out, it was used at the opening of the London 2012 Paralympics. Dury's confident and unusual demeanor caught the eyes of producers and directors of drama. His first important and extensive role was in Farouk Doan's miniseries for the BBC King of the Ghetto, a drama set in London's multiracial Brick Lane area with a cast led by a young Tim Roth. Dury had small parts in several films, probably the best known of which was Peter Greenaway's The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover, as well as a cameo appearance in Roman Polanski's Pirates. He also appeared in the Eduardo Gages film Rosinante, Alejandro Jodorowsky's The Rainbow Thief, and the Sylvester Stallone science fiction film Judge Dredd. His other film appearances included roles in Number no. 1 starring Bob Geldof, the Bob Hoskins film The Raggedy Ronnie, and Split Second starring Rutger Hauer and Kim Cattrall. He also appeared alongside fellow lyricists Bob Dylan and Tom Waits, respectively, in the movies Hearts of Fire and Bearskin, an urban fairy tale, also by Eduardo Gages. His later films included the comedy Different for Girls, and, directed by Tim Pope, who had directed a few of Dury's music videos. Dury also wrote a musical, Apples, staged in London's Royal Court Theatre. In 1987, he appeared as the narrator in Road at the Royal Court Theatre. Among the cast was actress and singer Jane Horrocks, who cohabited with Dury until late in 1988, although the relationship was kept discreet. Dury wrote and performed the theme song Profoundly in Love with Pandora for the television series The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, age 13 and three quarters, based on the book of the same name by Sue Townsend, as well as its follow-up, The Growing Pains of Adrian Mole. Dury turned down an offer from Andrew Lauren Weber to write the libretto for Cats. The reason, said Dury, I can't stand his music. When AIDS first came to prominence in the mid-1980s, Dury was among celebrities who appeared on UK television to promote safe sex, demonstrating how to put on a condom using a model of an erect penis. In the 1990s, he became an ambassador for UNICEF, recruiting stars such as Robbie Williams to publish a Sethi cause. The two visited Sri Lanka in this capacity to promote polio vaccination. Dury appeared with Curve on the Peace Together concert in CD, performing What a Waste, with benefits to the youth of Northern Ireland. He also supported the charity Cancer Backup. Dury appeared in the classic albums episode that focused on Steely Dan's album Asia. Dury commented that the album was one of the most upful he'd ever heard, and that the album lifted, his, spirits up whenever he played it. He felt that it showed the band's love for jazz musicians and that it had California in its blood, even though it was recorded by, Boys from New York. Dury also appeared at the end of the Carter USM track Sky West and Crooked narrating from the book Don Quixote. The track appeared on 1992, The Love Album. It was known for some time before his death that Dury had cancer. He was diagnosed with colorectal cancer in 1996 and underwent surgery, but tumors were later found in his liver, and he was told that his condition was terminal. Upon learning of his illness, Dury took the opportunity to marry his girlfriend, sculptor Sophie Tilson with whom he had had two children, Bill and Albert. In 1998, his death was incorrectly announced on XFM radio by Bob Geldof, possibly due to hoax information from a listener. In 1999, Dury collaborated with Madness on their first original album in 14 years on the track Drip Fed Fred. Suggs and the band cite him as a great influence. It was to be one of his last recordings. He also performed again with the Blockheads in mid-1999 at Ronnie Scott's in Soho.
This was a special performance recorded for LWT's South Bank show and the audience were invited fans and friends of the band and crew. His deteriorating condition was evident and he had to take rests between takes and be helped on and off stage. Ian Dury and the Blockheads' last public performance was a charity concert in aid of cancer backup on February 6, 2000 at the London Palladium, supported by Kirsty McCall and Phil Jupitus. Dury was noticeably ill and again had to be helped on and off stage. Dury died of metastatic colorectal cancer on March 27, 2000, aged 57. An obituary in The Guardian read, one of few true originals of the English music scene. Meanwhile, he was described by Suggs the singer of Madness, as possibly the finest lyricist we've seen. The Ian Dury website opened an online book of condolence shortly after his death, which was signed by hundreds of fans. He was cremated following a humanist funeral at Golders Green Crematorium with 250 mourners at the service, including fellow musicians Suggs and Jules Holland as well as other celebrity fans such as M.P. Momolam. Dury's son, Baxter Dury, is also a singer. He sang a few of his father's songs at the wake after the funeral, and has released his own albums, Len Parrott's Memorial Lift, Floor Show, Happy Soup, It's a Pleasure and Prince of Tears. In 2002 a musical bench designed by Mill Streisvik was placed in a favored viewing spot of Dury's near Poets Corner, in the gardens of Pembroke Lodge, in Richmond Park, southwest London. The back of the bench is inscribed with the words Reasons to be Cheerful. The title of one of Dury's songs. This solar powered seat was intended to allow visitors to plug in and listen to eight of his songs as well as an interview. In 1999, the autobiographical documentary On My Life, directed by Mike Connolly, was released. The film, in which Dury recalled his life and career, intercut with concert footage, included contributions from painter Peter Blake and members of the Blockheads. The program was broadcast in August 2009 BBC4. Between 6 January and February 14, 2009 a musical about his life, entitled Hit Me. The Life and Rhymes of Ian Dury, was premiered and ran at the Leicester Square Theatre in London. A biopic entitled Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll starring Andy Serkis as Dury was released on January 8, 2010, and was nominated for several awards. Ray Winstone and Naomi Harris also appeared. The title of the film is derived from Dury's 1977 Seven Inches single Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll. A musical, Reasons to be Cheerful, was produced by the Grey Theatre Company in association with Theatre Royal Stratford East and New Woolsey Theatre. Set in 1979, the musical featured Dury classics in a riotous coming of age tale. The 2010 production was supported by the Blockheads, while Sir Peter Blake donated a limited edition print of the Reasons to be Cheerful artwork. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.